Today we're going to be talking about bridges. Uh, bridges are a very broad topic, and bridges come in so many different sizes, from the smallest simple footbridge to massive five-mile spans. And so that variety of bridges in real life also gives us a wide range of things that we can build with Kiva planks, from things that are very small and simple to things that are really grand and spectacular. One of the nice things about uh, building uh Ch bridge challenges with Kiva planks is that it combines very nicely the engineering aspect, all of the balance, the cantilevers, that sort of thing that you need to to create a span. And you can also combine that with the design aspects of, of making a bridge that looks very good and is beautiful. And in real life, some bridges are designed specifically to be beautiful and some uh, they, people don't care what they look like. They just need to fulfill the function that they have in mind. Today's challenge, we'll start with a simple bridge challenge where you'll ask your students to to build a couple of lines and uh, just make a line with Kiva planks, just laying them out like this, and then make a second line that's parallel to that and put them about, about six to eight inches apart. It really doesn't matter. And then once you have uh, that built, we'll imagine that the space between those lines is a river. We're going to build a bridge over that river, and the bridge cannot be touching the uh, the banks of the river. Usually, I start with these simple parameters and leave it very open. And oftentimes, someone will very quickly ask, well, can we put supports in the river? And I will usually say, well, have you ever seen a bridge that has supports? And the answer is obviously yes. Typically, I'll say, well, in this challenge, yes, let's put, uh, we'll allow supports to be in the river. They're called piers when they're on a bridge. And you're also welcome to adjust the width of your river if you want, if you want to make uh, a wider bridge or make it a little bit easier, make it more narrow. So you're welcome to set that however you would like by allowing them to put piers in the in the uh, river, it makes this challenge much, much easier than if the answer to that question was no uh, and said, no, nothing can touch the water. Because once you uh, can't have the supports, it becomes much more of an engineering uh, challenge to be able to bridge that gap where you have a problem, where you have a four and a half inch Kiva plank, and that has to bridge maybe an eight inch gap. And how are you going to do that? And so that tends to take a lot of time and experimentation with all the balance and cantilevers to make that even work, much less make it look like a bridge. On this one, though, by allowing them to put supports in the river, they'll be able to build their bridge uh, pretty easily and they will look like bridges and they'll feel successful right away. And choose whatever time it is you have for the amount of planks they have and what your plan is for the day. If you want to give them five minutes to do this, you can have a timer and set that. Typically, what I like to do is give them about five minutes and then I can watch how they are progressing. And it could be that most of them have pretty much made their bridge before five minutes up and I can call it earlier and we can just move on from there. Or I may find out that uh, five minutes wasn't quite enough and I can just kind of stretch that out. And, and at five minutes, I give them a couple more minutes. Uh, one of the nice things about the timer is that uh, that can create a sense of urgency, a sense of excitement as they're trying to finish it up. And if you give them, uh, whether you're using the timer or not, giving them a, a warning and maybe a one or two minute warning that we're going to be done in this amount of time, and then they can put the final finishing touches on that. When the time is up, as usual, you'll want to invite your students to do a gallery walk, which is to walk around and observe and appreciate and learn from what others have built. They'll quickly learn other techniques that they hadn't thought of. Other variations on this activity that you can do, you could use blue paper, and I've sometimes cut those out so they have sort of irregular edges and and pass those out, and those can be realistic looking rivers. You could build a winding river that goes all the way across the room. People can be building lots of bridges over that same river. You can talk about how rivers affect where people live and where cities are located and how bridges affect people's lives when it gains access to the other side. And remember, you can repeat this exact activity again. We did this previously, see if you can build a bridge that's entirely different design than what you did last time. Or you could say, why don't you see if you can improve uh, improve on the previous design that you did? What could you do to to polish that up or make it a little bit nicer than you did the first time. We've just scratched the surface of bridges here. We'll talk again uh, 
more about bridges and activities in the future. Uh, until then, remember that you're building much more than bridges. You're building self-confidence, resilience, creativity. You're building friendships and teamwork. You're building minds. You're building their futures as they're as they're making these simple little bridges that may not seem very important as they're just making some little footbridge somewhere, but you add all of these things up and you're building these life skills that are actually uh, very important for, for their future and you are making a difference. I'll leave it with that and I'll see you next time with another bridge activity.